class today. So it's time to begin. So I'm going to get us started on time. More people I know will be loading in. So, so good to see some of my friends from afar. Ah. Hi, Fly Fight and Fitness. Are you doing things online as well? You should be because you're an amazing instructor. So thanks for coming um, and doing this session with me. So let's begin in child's pose. So child's pose, bringing your inside edges of your feet together, your knees nice and wide on your mat, and then let the hips sit back towards your heels. And now for some people, closing the knees isn't super comfortable. So if that's the case, take more weight into your upper body. If you can, sit way back, Lengthen through the spine and settle down. Now as you settle into your child's pose, the distance between your knees is really what is comfortable for you. What is that comfortable distance to allow your body to come down? And I find about rib cage distance apart is a nice distance, not too wide, and the ribs have space then to move down into towards the mat. Head, if you find your head is floating off the mat, that creates tension in the neck, so if you can relax your forehead down. If not, use a block and place it underneath the forehead. So whichever version of child's pose you're in, this is our opportunity to center ourselves, to bring yourself to this space, to your practice, to this next 40, 45 minutes of just being your time. This is time for you, time for you to take care of your health, your well-being, your physical and your mental health as well. So let's bring your awareness to your inhalation. And each time you inhale, observe where you feel the sensation of the breath traveling in your body. Do you observe a gentle lifting of the spine, perhaps an opening of the rib cage? Wherever you observe the inhalation moving in your body, with your next inhalation, can you draw in more breath? So you draw in more on that inhalation and see if you can travel the breath further down the spine, as if the breath could move from the top of the spine all the way to the base of the spine. Your inhalation breath is a breath of strength. So today, as we may need strength for whatever we are facing ahead of us, think of that in-breath as your strength breath, is what gives you the power to endure. But to balance that breath, let's come to your exhalation. So now focus towards the exhalation and notice how your body feels when you exhale. And just be the observer of the exhalation. And as you exhale, your exhalation is your calming breath, which balances out your strength breath, your inhalation, and your exhalation, bringing peace, quiet, and calm. As we practice today, let's try and even the breaths between inhaling and exhaling. So equal breathing. Your rhythm of breath will be dependent on how you feel today, but also how much you practice breathing. So if you can take long inhalations and long exhalations, Practice that today, make that your focus. Let's set our intention of balancing out between strong and calm. That balance between the two, the yin and the yang. Let's slowly progress and bring yourself up to a high kneeling position, but keeping the knees wide. With the knees wide, it allows our pelvis to move, so let your pelvis just rock side to side. Good. Now the arms vertical, the thighs vertical. Find your center and take a deep breath in. Exhale, curve the spine, round back, but sit back at the same time so we rock back. And then we inhale and we rock forward and open the chest. So we exhale, curve, we sit back, we rock. We inhale and extend. 
So the longer the breath, the more time you have to move between that rocking and flexing the spine and that lengthening and extending. So just waking up the spine. One more time. And then coming to center, I'm gonna turn so you can see this more easily. We're gonna take our right hand, place it in the center line of our body to give us support as the left elbow pulls up and away. And as you pull up and away, allow your hip to move and then the rib and then the hand reaches up. And take a deep breath, gazing up towards that thumb. Inhaling, exhaling. And just holding a nice easy rotation to begin with. And then exhale and lower the hand down. Place that hand near the center line of your body. Move from your left hip to rotate the rib cage and then open the arm out in the opposite direction. And again, just observe where the breath is moving. Can you still breathe freely? Can you achieve that full breath? And then bringing this hand down. Let's make it more dynamic. Opposite side. Inhale, open. Exhale, come through. Thread through. Shoulder comes down. And reach across the mat. On your next inhalation, open up again. And then exhale, come through. So the longer the breath, the more time you have to move. So let's try and lengthen the breath. So this is a practice of linking breath and movement. And then place the hand down. Alright, take a deep breath here in the center, in. And as you exhale, start to open and reach. And inhale, continue. Exhale, thread through. Now, if I am going too quickly for you, you find a rhythm that feels right in your body. Yoga is meant to be a personal practice. So as I guide you, think of it simply as that. I am guiding, but your rhythm is your rhythm. One more. And then let the hand flow down. Bring your hands shoulder width apart. Walk your knees in line with your hips. Curl your toes under, and then we're going to activate the core by lifting the abdominal wall towards the spine as we float your knees up. Now, as we float the knees up, you can start to feel the fire, the heat come into your body. And as that fire and heat comes into your body, now your breath becomes even more important. Remember that inhalation gives you strength. So focus on that inhalation to give you some strength. And then use the exhalation to help you gather your inner core body. So lifting the abdominal wall upwards. And then lift the heels, press back into your first downward facing dog. And then just roll the heels. So as one heel rolls up, the other one rolls down. Just find an easy rhythm. Again, just warming. Now this isn't a full down dog yet. We're going to expand this in a moment. So for now, just awaken the backs of the legs from hips to heels. But, and then... Lift both heels up, float yourself back down. Taking your right arm, reach it out in front. Left leg reaches back. Now to wake up your core body, curve your spine, bring the knee and the elbow in, and then reach and lengthen. So we exhale in, we inhale and lengthen. Bring it in and extend out. So this whole first series is just what I call an awakening of the body. So we're waking up the nervous system, the muscular system, the fascial system, getting everything ready. One more time, reach out and hold, find stability, and then float that hand down. Take a breath here to center yourself. Inhale, exhale, set your core, reach the opposite arm forward to leg extending back. Now you can flex through that foot and press through the heel, creating a little bit more integrity in that leg perhaps, and then connect through the torso. Curve the spine, come in, inhale and lengthen. Curve in and lengthen. So we exhale to curve, 
we inhale to create length. So our breath can also help with movement of the spine. Two more times. One more time. And hold. Find that stability. Breathe into it. And then float the hand and the knee down. Find that centering breath. Inhale fully. Exhale. Good, curl your toes under. Float the knees. Lift your hips up and then walk back towards your feet. Now feet are about hip distance apart. Let your upper body dangle over your legs. Soften the knees and let tension out of the low back. You can stay right there with the fingertips touching or with the knees slightly bent, take your hands across, reaching to the opposite elbow, tuck your chin and gently draw the forearms downwards. Now, as you hold that pose, this is an ideal place to reconnect to the breath. The front rib, rib cage is compressed, which moves the breath into the back body, helping us to expand and stretch out through the back rib cage. So between each of your ribs are what we call intercostal muscles, and they get stiff and tight, especially if you've been sitting for a long time behind your computers, right? Those get super tight, so breathe into that space. Right, and then walk your hands down to the mat and then walk forward to your full plank. Right, in that full plank, inhale here. As you exhale, lift the hips upwards and now we come into that full downward facing dog, inverted V. Your heels may or may not touch. Roll one heel up and then roll the other. So now as we're in this um, wider position between the heels of the hands and the toes, there's just a little bit more distance for the body to move into. One more. Right. And then lift your heels and come forward to a plank pose. From here, bend the knees. Lower yourself all the way down. Point your toes away and spread the feet into the floor. So the tops of the feet spread, the elbows draw in. We inhale, lengthen the spine. Now on the way down, reach the crown of the head forward and lengthen forward. So we inhale to lift, exhale to extend forward. So you almost want to feel a sensation of your body getting longer as you extend out. So we extend up, but then we lengthen on the way down. One more repetition. Lengthening. Good. And then come to an extension, shoulders roll back. Now, kneecaps are lifted and legs are very active. Hands come in beside the rib cage. So when we go to practice upward facing dog, you have the option to be here, which is cobra pose. Or keep this shape, press into the hands, come into upward facing dog. Actively use your legs, breathe. And then lift the hips, roll through the feet, come back downward facing dog. So breath even, breath full. You're going to take your right leg, lift it up nice and high, opening up that hip, and then bend the knee, step to the outside of your right hand, opening the toes slightly, and coming into a lunge. Now you can keep the back knee lifted or back knee down, your choice. Just gently rock between your right and left hip. I'm going to turn so you can see. So the rocking action is just to create some hydration in the hip joint. So we start to get the hip joint mobile before we go into the deeper poses. But then come to the center. If you're on your knee, lift your knee, lift up, step back, downward facing dog. Strong through the core, strong through the upper body. Opposite leg, left leg lifts up. Good. Step out to the outside of your left hand. Turn the toe out and then lower the back knee if you'd like or keep it lifted as you rock. So this has been our awakening series, getting us ready for the bigger poses, the stronger series of our standing poses. From center, 
Lift the knee, lift the hip, step back, downward facing dog. At any time in the practice, instead of downward facing dog, you can go to child's pose. I have to adjust my pants, sorry about that. Good, <laughs> hold it there. <laughs> and now, lift your heels, bend your knees, lift your hands, walk your feet in behind your hands or feet together. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, hands to your shins, lengthen up halfway. Exhale, fold back down. Now there's a lot of tension along that back line of your body from hip to heel. Soften the knees so your fingertips can touch. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale again, create length. Exhale, fold. On your next inhalation, push down through your feet, lengthen through the spine, come all the way to standing, arms overhead, and exhale to heart center. All right, from here, feet together or feet slightly apart, find your foundation. So just rock gently forward and back until you find equal weight on the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot. So finding that equal weight into the ball of the foot and the heel. And now observe equal weight on the inside edge of the foot and the outside edge of the foot. So the inner heel, the mound of the big toe, the outer heel, the mound of the little toe. Let the arms float down by your side and then inhale, gaze upwards, open the chest and slightly extend the spine and stay here for a few breaths. So you feel as though you're lifting through the sternum and opening up through the spine. Again, if there's discomfort in this pose, come forward, just bring yourself back to neutral and hold. So from the slight extension, bring yourself back to center and bring yourself back into Tadasana, equal standing. Let the arms float down. Inhale, raise up again, and as you exhale, let the shoulders rest away from the ears, and keeping the arms the same distance apart from each other, exhale over into one side, breathing through it. So try and be able to find that evenness between the two arms. Now, as we lengthen away from the side that we're lengthening away from, press into that foot, so that foot stays grounded. Inhale, create length as you exhale, reach to the opposite side and the foot that you're reaching away from, ground that foot so you find center. Inhale to the center, exhale over. Inhale to the center, exhale over. We've got one more each way. Inhale, center, exhale over. Inhale up, exhale over. Inhale through the standing. Exhale, let your arms float down. Bend the knees slightly, push into the ground as you sweep the arms upwards on an inhalation and then down to the center line of your body as you exhale. So you press and ground the feet downwards as we extend upwards and then let the arms float down. Two more times, inhale fully. Equalness on your exhalation. One more. And then come all the way back to heart center. So moving into a sun salutation. Move to the top of the mat. Let the arms float down and inhale, raise upwards. As you exhale, hinge forward, come into that forward bend. We're going to take some extra breaths here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold downwards. Tuck the chin slightly, let any tension go out of the neck and shoulders. Bend your knees to take your hands down. Step your right leg back and come into a lunge. Soften the back knee. Roll up and open up through the chest. Breathing upwards. Come into a slight extension. Exhale, hands come down. Curl the back toes under. Lift up, step back, downward facing dog. Breathe through it. Let the head and shoulders move. Allow some movement within the pose. Lift your heels, bend your knees, look to your hands, jump or step in. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, come all the way to standing. Exhale, 
heart center. So the heart rate is going to start to rise. Inhale up. Exhale, hip hinge. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come down. Take an extra breath here. Again, if you're tight through the backs of the legs, just bend the knee. Bend both knees now. Hands come down. Step the left leg back. Lower that back knee down to the floor. And then extend and open. Find that openness, find that extension. And when you extend your spine, make sure that you can still breathe. If you feel you can't breathe well, decrease how much extension you have. Because if we hold breath and we hold tension, we bring tension into our poses. Exhale, fold forward, curl the back toe under, step back, downward facing dog. Breathing through it. Lift your heels, bend your knees, look to your hands, jump or step in. Exhale, fold over your legs, push down to the feet. Inhale, come all the way to standing. And exhale to heart center. So we're gonna go into a standing flow. Lower the arms down, inhale. Hinge forward as you exhale, come into that forward bend. Inhale, create length in the spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. The bend the knees, hands come to the mat, Jump or step your feet back to a plank pose. Lower yourself down halfway or all the way. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Breathing into it. Let's take the left leg, reach it up nice and high. Open up that hip, breathing into it. So now we begin our strength series. Come forward, hover the, the shin just above the floor. Find strength and stability. You can always lower the back knee down to rest. From here, rotate across the body, trying to touch it, the knee towards the forearm. Come to the center. Go to the outside, touch. Come to the center, press back up. Do it again, come center. Cross the body, center, outside of the body, center, push up. One more time. Come center, cross the body, center, outside, center, lift up and hold. Now come through the center, step into a lunge. So you're going to step the foot where your left hand was and create a vertical line with your shin. You're on the ball of the back toe, and we're going to reach open and rotate the back foot so that the outside edge of the foot presses to the end of the mat as you come to warrior two. And as we lunge into warrior two, think about the hip crease of the front leg moving downward. As the hip crease of the front leg moves downward, the back leg stays grounded on the outside edge of the foot, and that hip lines in with the front leg. So we open up this hip so that the hips and ribs open to the side of the room. But the arms are extended out from the shoulder, reaching forward and back, but our body is centered. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, reach out. So just an easy flow through the legs. Connecting your breath again with your inhalation and your exhalation. Find that easy, even rhythm. And then hold here, breathe. As you lunge into that front thigh, find your strength, find your focus, find that balance between strength and calm. Ease within the effort. Slide the rib cage forward. Forearm comes down, back arm reaches over as you turn your eyes up into the upper arm. Now this is where you could use a block. If you're finding this is an intense pose for you and you have a block, place the heel of the hand on the block and that just creates a little bit of lift through your torso so that you feel like you're not compressing into that side, but you're using that bottom arm to help you lift. Breathe into it. One more deep breath here, in. Exhale. We take that arm all the way around 
and down. As you bring your back heel up, turn your front toes slightly out. Lunge forward and reach forward to find length. Now, keeping that back foot grounded, but start to move from your back hip, rolling inwards to open the arm up towards the ceiling to find that revolution or revolving lunge. Now I'm going to turn so that you can see what's going to happen next. Or just listen for what's happening next, right, as we come around. Good. So you can either keep the hand reaching up towards the ceiling, or you can use this hand to support you by bringing it down to the mat. We are going to engage the core. Step that lunge foot back and come into your side T-stand. Crossing the ankles, holding and breathing. Now, side bend. Reach over, fingertips towards the floor. A little bit of Pilates here. Inhale, come up. Exhale, fingertips towards the floor as you lift that hip. And then come back up. So we go over and we lift. At any time, you can bend your knees and just come into that side plank with a bent knee, or take a break, one more. Shh, and hold. To come out of this pose, rotate to the front. Come to your plank or your push up, lower yourself down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog, and breathe. Nicely done. Take a rest in child's pose. If you feel like, oh, I just need a bit of a rest, a bit of time, before we do the other side. So good, thanks for waving everybody. So great to have you here. Okay, so we're gonna go into the other side. So if you were down in child's pose, let's come into your downward facing dog. Lifting the right leg, open it up. Find that strength. Remember where we started, we come forward. You're gonna take that knee across, and then you're gonna open it. You're gonna come center and push back up. We have two more of those. Come in, go across, go wide, come center and back. So our strength poses here, in, come across, go cent side, center and lift. Oh, breathe, catch your breath. Draw that knee in, step into your lunge. As you step into the lunge, find your alignment of your shin bone in vertical alignment. Turn that back foot, heel in, reach up, come to your warrior. Now, front femur moves down. So the front femur is moving down, and the ribs rest directly over top of the pelvis. Take a glance at your front knee, and the knee, the center of the knee, should line with the second and third toe, so that we keep the alignment vertical through the shin, which is our strongest architecture in this pose. So the legs are strong. Inhale, lift up. Exhale. Inhale, raise. Exhale. So linking your breath and your movement so if you know a yoga breath, use the breath through the nose only. If you're a Pilates teacher and you're used to breathing nose to mouth, feel free to do that as well. Inhale here, exhale and hold. Most important thing is that you're breathing. Now keeping that alignment, slide the rib cage forward, forearm down, arm reaches over into extended angle pose. Remember you can use the block. I love the block because you can get energy from the ground. As you push down into the heel of the hand, it radiates energy up. It's like a hydraulic jack in the body, and it lifts the torso so that we're not weighing heavy in the pelvis and weighing heavy into the rib cage or the core body. So you can use it as a tool to lift. So you've got the strength in the pose. Bring the arm that's overhead, circle around and down. And as that hand comes down, slightly turn out the foot so we can rotate 
to the opposite side. So we're revolving into the opposite side of the body here. In this rotating lunge, if you prefer to bring the knee down, come out of the twist, lower the knee, and then go back into your twist. That's less stress into the low back. But we have our upper body strength exercise coming, yes? Right, we have that strength exercise coming. It is coming. Hold here, breathe. Now, stabilize. Press into the supporting arm. Remember, you can have this back knee down. And then step back. Whew. Open up into your side T. So the feet are scissored intentionally that the bottom knee can always come down. From here, reach over, side bend. And then inhale, lift up. So a little Pilates practice here in the middle of our yoga class. Uh -huh. That is fusion. Breathe through it. And in. Lift up onto the balls of the feet as you reach over. And that just gives you a little bit more lengthening up and over. Bottom waist lifts up. One more repetition. Come up, hold, as if nothing happened. Rotate back to your plank. You can go right into child's pose or down dog or vinyasa through. Lower, lift, reach back, downward dog. Breathe. Find your full breath. Lift your heels, bend your knees, jump or step into your hands. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, create length all the way up to standing. Exhale to heart center. Oh, so fun. Right? Sweep down, sit back, reach your arms overhead into your chair pose. Now the inner thighs draw in. Remember we talked about the feet equalness on the inside and the outside? Sometimes the legs want to roll out or roll in. So find that equal balance. Breathe into it. We stand up, we sit back. So we create a little bit of circulation through the muscles by creating what we call a muscle pump. Right, the pumping action of the motion circulates the blood through the legs. Breathe through it. Two more. One more. Come down, hinge forward, fingertips to the floor. Now, we're gonna lift our left foot. Take it behind you. Your right hand is gonna go wider than your supporting foot onto your fingertips or if you've got lots of flexibility to the palm of the hand, and then come into half moon pose. As you rotate the lifted leg so that the toes point towards the side of the room, the hips begin to stack over top of each other. So our balancing pose of today's class, half moon pose. This is an excellent time to use a block if you have a block, place it underneath your hand. The leg that's lifted is straight out from the hip, creating a vertical line or creating a horizontal line parallel to the floor or the ceiling. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale, come back to where we began, folding forward, letting all that tension go. So we have a second set of our chair poses. Sit back into your hips, reach your arms up overhead. Ooh, right? Come on up and sit. Every time we sit, think about your foundation, your feet. Your feet equally weighted on the in and outside edge. Engage the inner and outer thigh equally. If legs together for you is not a comfortable position, feel free to go hip distance apart, whatever it is for you. Take it down to chair pose this time and hold. Hmm, anything happening? Yeah. Hinge forward. Now, opposite leg is gonna lift. Extend it back. If you're gonna use the block, place it underneath your hand. The hand is slightly out from the supporting foot and then bring yourself up into half moon pose. So half moon pose. 
The, the leg that is supporting you is pointing straight to the top of your mat. The leg that's lifting is parallel to the floor or the mat. Flex the ankle of the foot that's lifting to push away, and that's going to create integrity in the leg. As you create that integrity, engage all the muscles along the side of the body from the ankle to your hip and from your hip to your shoulder. So feel the entire length. If you fall out of the balance, just reset. One more breath. And then exhale, bring the leg in, come to your forward bend, let the tension go to your neck and shoulders. If you're no longer at the top of the mat, inch yourself forward, place your hands down, walk your feet back, come to your plank pose. You can vinyasa or rest in child's pose, lower yourself down, inhale up, exhale back. Lift your heels, bend your knees, look to your hands, jump in and sit down. Yay! But not really because we have floor work to do. So before we begin the next series, let's get some flexibility in the backs of the legs in the seated position. So walk your sitting bones back and maybe smooth the soft tissue of your gluteals out of the way so you can find your sitting bones. So the sitting bones, the base of the pelvis on the right and left side. If you just rock right and left, you're going to feel those bones. Good. Now this is where blocks come in handy and belts. <laughs> blocks and belts always come in handy. All right, if you know you're tight in a forward bend, elevate up. This is all about mechanics. When we open up the hip joint, it gives us more room to go forward. You can also use the belt around your feet. Inhale, create length, flex gently through the ankle, shoulders draw back. Now, I almost want you to feel like you're going to do a back bend here. So you're going to extend back and the sternum is going to go forward. So sternum goes forward. Oh. Now the body wants to collapse and you're going to say, no, not going to happen today. I'm going to lead with my sternum and then you should feel your upper back muscles working. I'm going to add a little Pilates here. Tuck the chin. So wherever you are, you are. If you're holding onto your feet, you're holding onto your feet. You're going to open the arms out. So if you have the belt, you're going to let go. Now feel the strength of your upper back as you reach the arms overhead. Turn the palms in, and now you're using your entire core to hinge forward. Now there's strength involved. You should feel your legs mu muscles working, your spinal muscles working, as we try and reach and lengthen. Now, if there's weakness in these upper back muscles, the back wants to do this. And our work is to go the opposite way. The thumbs are going back. We're doing a forward bend with a little bit of a back extension. This is work, yes? Inhale. Exhale. Who really wants to just melt over? Do you? Inhale. Exhale. Now you get to melt. Ugh. Let your spine just melt over your legs. So a seated forward bend is a combination of two things. A hinge of the hip and flexion of the spine. But if one of those areas is tight, your ability to get deep into the pose becomes limited. So if we get the hips to move and then the spine to follow through, we can eventually just touch our noses to our shins easily, right? in time, in practice, right? If you're holding onto your feet, elbows go wide, inhale here, exhale, and roll yourself up. So if you were on the block, time to come off the block. We're gonna go into V-sit from Pilates and fitness, boat pose from yoga. Bend your knees, inner thighs together. Lean back and find that V-sit. Arms go out and reach the arms towards the ceiling. Now that may be as far as you go. Chin slightly tucked, feet stay down, and you may say, I am happy right there. We're gonna do three sets of boat poses, and each time, you can advance to where you take that boat pose to. But the key thing is to keep your spine alignment. All right, when the spine tucks under and we hold, we put a lot of compression into your low back. So you wanna lean into the back edges of your sitting bones, but keep your spine aligned. How are you doing, are you still holding? Inhale here, exhale, come forward. Round it up. Now remember you have choices. You can stay with the same thing or lean back, float one leg, float the other leg. Okay, 
let go. You can stay there. You can go vertical. So wherever you are, whatever one you've decided, reconnect to your breath. Remember we talked about breath in the beginning, that even inhalation and exhalation. And you may find now that one of those breaths is getting out of sync. If you can even it out, it will bring you a sense of calm, yet a sense of strength. I call that finding the ease in the effort. Finding the ease in the effort. One more breath. And then hands back. And round forward and rest. Oh. Okay, if your hip flexors right out here and the hips are tight, give them a little bit of a shake out because you have one more option. One more. And then we roll it back. Okay, so here we go. Lean. One leg up, other leg up. Take a hold of the legs, come all the way out. So you come into that straight leg. Now let go, hold, reach. And you're saying to yourself, hello. Now as my friend Dave just gave us me on today because David is one of my past Olympian friends, right? Olympic diver, and so this is easy for him, right? And he's been teaching workouts online as well, so you definitely wanna catch him online for his workouts as well because he's amazing. How are you doing in that B-sit? Hold four, three, two, one. Bend your knees, open the legs up, come into butterfly pose and just gently rock. Oh. Now you can take your forearms into your inner thighs and lean your body forward to give yourself a little bit of a release. So guess what? It's almost time to finish. Do you feel good about that? Let's finish this up. Bring yourself up and find uh, your belt. Place it around your right foot, roll back, and bring that right leg straight up. Now I said I was gonna do some dynamic flexibility work with you here. So your choice is left leg stays bent or straight. This next technique you're gonna do is called an AI stretch, active isolated stretching. So you're gonna pull into just a gentle stretch for you, where you feel some tension, but not so much that you can't go on. It's like it's gentle, it's nice tension. Okay, then lower the leg all the way down, and then use the belt to come up. Gently encourage a little deeper stretch, and then move out. So it's a dynamic motion in a controlled manner. So you go at a pace that's right for you. Now, if you do not have a belt, Right? You can just do the full range of motion and then at the top, just assist your leg to go a little bit further. Right? So that's just that little bit further. Yeah. So it's like a split second that you go for a little bit more range of motion. And then on the last one, hold here. And see if you've increased your range of motion a little bit. Typically, by moving through the joint, you start to get more mobility. So that dynamic movement creates mobility in the joint. And now bend this knee. Release the belt if you're using it. Take your foot out, extend both legs, close your eyes, and just notice what you notice. You may notice that the leg that you have just stretched feels so much longer than the opposite. So this is not a good time to finish your practice. Right? You also might feel that the leg that you've been stretching feels almost as though they've created some space in the joint. So the sensation between the two legs is very different. So let's balance it out. Bring the opposite leg up, extend it up. Try to find a straight leg, and then you can have this leg bent or straight. Find your first point of tension. Where is that for you? This is where I find the belts are really helpful for, for doing this dynamic flexibility work. So lower yourself all the way down in a controlled tempo. Use your arms to help you lift and then encourage a little bit more. So it's not a bounce, but I think of it as an encouragement. Ah, just a little encouragement for my upper body to draw that leg into a little bit more range of motion. So there's a whole bunch of things going on here. Now, some of you come to my classes on a regular basis, and some of you do my workshops when I'm presenting internationally at conferences, but it is all physiology, right? You may think it's magic, but it's physiology. We are playing with our nervous system. We are manipulating the nervous
nervous system, which controls the whole body. Come up, hold. <sighs> Breathe into it. So my music has ended, which means this is the end of our practice. But hold it just a little bit longer. And then soften the knee. And move the belt. Extend the leg out, and hopefully now you extend the legs out. Both legs are even to each other. Equal. So let's reach up overhead. Inhale, create length from your fingertips to your toes. So you're reaching in two opposing directions and feeling tension actually here. And then as you exhale, let all that tension go. <sighs> let's do that again. Create tension. Inhale. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Stretch forward and then exhale. <sighs> One more time. Feel tension. And then as you let go, just surrender. <sighs> So let your eyes close. Let your arms come into a comfortable position for you, wherever that may be. It might be on the side of your body, resting on your torso. Let the legs just gently roll out from the hips. And if having the legs straight causes tension in your low back, bend your knees. The most important thing in Shavasana, in corpse pose, is to find rest. Find rest. It is our opportunity to let the body rest, let the mind settle, and allow the nervous system to rebalance itself. So as you hold your savasana, know that the human body is incredibly intelligent. And if we allow it to do what it naturally will do, which is to move frequently, like you've just done. To care for it with rest and with fueling it. And also to let it settle. So we find the balance between high energy and calm energy. And whatever you need more of in your life right now, depending on what challenges are ahead of you as we all work together through what the global challenge is, take a moment to go, I'm okay. And as you settle into this rest, and you can stay here for the rest of the afternoon if there's no one home to bother you, right? You can just lock the door and come back to Shavasana. Or if you're ready, hug your knees into your chest roll yourself onto your side, and then gently bring yourself into a seated position. And I'm just gonna come and check in because I see flashing things happening on my phone right now. Thank you so many of you for um, joining the class today and I will be back on again tomorrow. The tomorrow's class is at four o'clock. So a little later class tomorrow so you can get all your things done and then join me for four o'clock. Come to a seated position, inhale. And as you exhale, bring your hands together. And as we 